Okay, so I finished the outlining in the black and I think you can see why it's important to do the black outlining after you've done it in pencil. It's really clear now where we're gonna put our colors and you may wanna go over ahead and after you've done the black outlining, just go in really quickly and erase any pencil marks because sometimes even after I've done it in pencil and I'm going over in the black I see where I may want to make just a few little changes and I've done that so just go back in and erase them. Um, you're going to be doing colored pencil over the top but sometimes even when you do that the pencil shows through and we want this to look our absolute best so let's do some erasing in the obvious places where we changed our mind when we did it over with the sharpie. So I'm getting excited about this. I think they're going to look great. Okay. Now it's time to think about color. You're going to see an image on your screen of the real St. Basil's Cathedral, and it is fantastic. It has so many different colors. It doesn't even look real. It looks edible to me. And we want to do the same thing on ours. So go ahead and get your colored pencils out. And when you're choosing colors, I like to think about using contrasting colors. So using um, dark colors next to light colors, cool colors next to warm colors, and just go ahead and start away. When you are doing coloring, it's really important that you take your time, you use your best effort, and you're not scribbling. Uh, I think that sometimes, even when you get older, you revert back to scribbling because you're in a hurry and you feel like it's not going to make a difference. But this is not a rushed project. You can break this down into several different parts. Maybe you just want to do one tower at a time and just do your best work. So I'm going to go ahead and start just for no reason, but I'm going to start on these circles. What I like to do is actually outline the circle first and then start filling it in. I'm taking my time and I'm doing all the colored pencil marks in one direction, the up and down direction. Pressing down. This is called rich coloring. When you're really putting effort into it, you're making sure that no white spots are showing through. It makes a big difference. Look how vibrant that pink is. I'll show you the difference between that and just kind of doing it quickly. I think it's pretty clear the difference and I prefer this and I hope you prefer it too. The other thing is, well, I'll show you in a different spot, a different color coloring, but today we are doing the rich coloring, pressing down. You don't have to press down so hard that your hand starts to hurt, but if it does get to that point, you just shake it off, give it a little break, have a snack, come back, do some more coloring. So, okay, so I'm going to fix this bun where we weren't really doing our best, coloring it in, up and down strokes. I love this magenta. Okay, so we picked this um, really warm color. Magenta is a warm color. Warm colors I think of as kind of fire colors like reds and pinks and yellows and oranges. So to contrast that, to make it really show up, I'm going to choose a cool color like this turquoisey blue. And let's see how that look behind, looks behind it. I think you can see how much that makes it pop. Doing my careful coloring, trying to make sure that no white spots are showing behind, showing through. Trying to stay within the lines. We've heard a lot of times about how, you know, you don't have to stay within the lines. And that's true when you're trying to do something abstract and really loose. But the way we've done this project, it's a little more controlled. And so if you've gone to the trouble of drawing it in pencil and then tracing it in Sharpie, I think you probably want to go ahead and try and stay within the lines. So that's what I'm doing here. OK, so I'm going to move on to another section of color because I think we know where this is headed. I would go ahead and continue that for that dome. And this part, since I didn't do any pattern on it, I would do a solid color. Let's see, I'm going to pick a yellow for that. I'm not going to do 
this kind of coloring back and forth in this way, you can see that that looks like it's um, a much younger child. And we are professional artists at this point, so we are doing the careful, rich coloring, having the um, really brush strokes, because even when you're using colored pencils, it's a lot like painting. So our brush strokes are going to be controlled. We're pulling the brush back and forth towards us. This may take, I'm saying, I've told you before, this is going to take quite a long time. This is basically you've created your own coloring page, but it's more than that. This is a piece of history that you're recreating. And once we do finish the, um, the painting, the colored pencil painting, you are going to then cut it out carefully and paste it onto the um, now dry blue background or red background or whatever color that you've chosen and it's just it's going to look fantastic. The background gives it a whole nother dimension and um, it really makes it pop. So okay so I've gotten a pretty good amount done on that. Okay so I've chosen this green this kind of emerald green we're doing that for the outer part of this circle. And I have to start thinking about what I'm going to do for the two inner circles. You know, it's okay because we are going to have a different colored background to leave some of the elements in your, um, in your design white. Not too many of them because since we are basing it on St. Basil's Cathedral, it's almost completely just a rainbow of colors, but it's okay to have some of it white and some of it you may even want to color in um, with black Sharpie um, and that's fine as well. But so I did this in green and I think I'm going to choose maybe an orange because the green is a cool color and the orange is a warm color. And look at that. The eye sees that and it, it just jumps out at your eye because the colors right next to each other really contrast. And then for the little moon shape I put in there, whoop, I'm gonna do a yellow. And then you can either repeat those same colors, you can mix them up. One of the main ideas for this is variety. We want this to just catch your eye all over the place. And you can see that my students did that on theirs, and I did it on the other one um, that I completed before. So hopefully you will have a lot of fun with this. Um, let me just show you what we need to do after you've finished um, all the coloring. You have to do the careful cutout. Um, Try and be cautious to keep as much of the black outline as you have since that um, is always, I recommend a lot of things um, that you've drawn if you outline it with a black Sharpie. It really completes it. It makes it look more finished and more professional. So let's try and keep as much as we can of it on there. But even I'm looking here and I'm cutting some of it off. It's not the end of the world. The tip to cutting is to turn the paper as you cut, especially on these kind of wonky shapes that we've done, these onion shaped domes. And I find that once I've cut part of it out, it's okay to just kind of cut this off, toss it away, and then it's easier to come in at a different angle and cut some more. So, I think you get the idea. First step was to paint the background. Then we drew our domes, making sure that we did overlapping, a variety of heights, shapes, and patterns. 
we went over it again in Sharpie, and then we came in with our colored pencils, trying to think of using contrasting colors, a variety of color, and just making sure that it's gonna pop and be really vibrant. Then we're gonna paste it onto our background color, making sure that the bottom of your towers line up with the bottom of the background. You don't want it floating up in space. I'm excited about your project. I hope you enjoy it. I enjoyed teaching it to you. So please check out my other free art lessons online. My name is Miss Volan, and hope to see you soon. Thanks. <laughs>